Novi, join your BSA club on Wednesday, February 28th from 3 to 4 p.m. in room 220. To discuss the stigma and stereotypes on natural hair, there will be foods and sweets, so make sure you bring your friend. Please, if you have any questions, please email Camilla Wilson. See you there, Novi. Tryouts for Novi Girls Varsity Soccer begin Monday, March 11th. In order to try out, you have to have completed final forms and an updated physical on file. Tryouts will be from 3.30 to 5 at Total Sports Wixom. If you have any questions, go to room 236 or reach out to Senior Captain Tally Burns. Hey Novi, this is Luke back again to tell you that Novi Astronomy is going to be having their ninth meeting tomorrow in room 247. This meeting's topic will be about space rockets, updates on the night sky, and an activity to go along with it. And as always, this is Luke signing off. Hey Novi, tryouts for girls across are Monday, March 11th at 3 p.m. on the stadium turf. Make sure to sign up on final forms beforehand with a recent physical uploaded to receive important email communications from Coach West. 2024 is here, and that means our next presidential election is right around the corner. Every four years, Americans cast their ballots for president, but sometimes the candidate who gets the most votes doesn't win. Like in 2016, when Hillary Clinton received millions more votes than President Donald Trump did. So, how did she lose? The answer lies in the election. Electoral College. Do you know what the Electoral College is? No. No. Uh, no. With 538 total electors who are real people that cast votes, each state has a number of electoral votes based on its population. For example, Michigan with 10 million people has 15 votes, whereas California, which is much bigger with 40 million people, has 54 votes. These numbers come from the state's number of representatives in the House plus its two senators. So when Americans vote for president, they're not really voting for president. Instead, they're voting for who their state's electors will vote for. For example, in 2016, all of Michigan's electoral votes went to Donald Trump, and in 2020, they all went to Joe Biden. Our country has used this system for over 200 years to this point, but some have also criticized it for being unfair. Um, I think that if you're going to have a democracy like the U.S. has, it should be by popular vote. I feel like it is a useful tool for certain purposes, but sometimes it can be not beneficial. A common criticism of the Electoral College is that it allows some states to have more power than others. Wyoming has two senators and one representative, giving it three total electoral votes. California has two senators and 52 representatives, giving it 54 electoral votes. In Wyoming, one electoral vote represents about 193,000 people, but in California, that same electoral vote would represent about 726,000 people, which means that one person's vote in Wyoming is technically about three times more powerful than somebody in California's vote. Another reason many have criticized the Electoral College is the elevated status of so-called swing states like Michigan. These are states that often flip between Democrat and Republican, which is the complete opposite of other states that have super reliable voting patterns, like California, for example. Or on the flip side, Wyoming always voting Republican. Many voters in reliably red and blue states have felt discouraged to vote with the logic that they already know the outcome of their state's election. And because of this, just a handful of states really decide the result of the election. These swing states have historically voted for candidates of both parties by very thin margins. For example, in 2016, Michigan voted for Donald Trump by just about 10,000 votes or a 0.23% margin. But in the next presidential election, Michigan voted for Joe Biden by about 140,000 votes or a still slim 2.8% margin. Overall, many have used this to call for the abolition of the Electoral College in favor of a system where the popular vote matters. Others argue that the Electoral College actually protects the interests of all people equally. We need it for federalism. The states have to have a decision in our national elections. It's important. Many say a popular vote system would incentivize candidates to focus on heavily populated urban areas, leaving out rural voters in the process. Supporters also reference the Electoral College's constitutional origin, and for more on that, we spoke to Mr. Brenner. Could you tell us a little bit about the constitutional origins of the Electoral College? The constitutional origins begin with the Founding Fathers meeting in Philadelphia at a convention in 1787 and discussing what ways to create a democracy that was both representative but protected the limited rights of citizens at that time. So this is really more about protecting states' rights at this time because the states were the prime government vehicle for the people during the founding of our country. So why should this matter to you as a Novi High School student? Well, many of us, particularly us seniors, are going to be 18 by the time November hits when the presidential elections will happen and we can go cast our ballots. Whoa, who is that cool, mysterious, beautiful, bald guy standing by the window? It is I, Wildcats. 
thanks for watching today's episode we'll see you tomorrow for another episode tomorrow and also friday thanks for watching and stay tuned well cats i'm out do you have a story that you want featured on the cat's eye news email us at nhscatseyenews at gmail.com just send us details pictures and videos and we'll do the rest